Kia ora all and welcome to the Huddy Hui episode 39. It's only me tonight. Adam Julian's enjoying the sights and sounds, the smells of Rotorua. Um, but we have a rather special guest tonight. He is coming into us live from London. He's uh, had two sleeps already since he was in Japan in the weekend. And our guest uh, tonight is New Zealand referee, professional referee, Brendan Pickerel. Brendan, many thanks for making yourself available for coming on the Hui tonight. Uh, you're currently uh, now set up in London after being in Japan in the weekend uh, for the Autumn Internationals. Tell us about uh, the fixtures that you are down to officiate in and um, what games are those? Yeah, no, thanks, Brad. Thanks for having me on. Um, last week and went up to Japan with uh, my fellow referee, uh, Paul Williams. So Paul refereed Japan versus Australia in um, Oita. So we flew up from Auckland via Singapore into Tokyo, then got a flight down to the south of Japan. Um, so we had that game there. Paul was the referee and I was the TMO. Uh, and then we jumped on the plane and came across to London. So uh, I landed in London uh, on Sunday night and uh, I'm here. I'm going to referee a game in the English Championship on Saturday. And then I'll head down to Paris with Ben O'Keefe. He's refereeing um France versus Argentina where I'll be the TMO I'll be the TMO again for James Dolman on Italy versus Argentina and then I'll head up to Scotland where I'll referee Scotland versus Japan so that's my next few weeks uh, pretty exciting and um yeah just good to um get a bit of travel and a bit of rugby it'll be a really cool few weeks so that game on uh Scotland versus Japan that's a rematch from two years ago from the rugby world cup and of course uh Japan winning that day and that game I believe will be at Murrayfield and that will be quite an important occasion for the Scottish team uh, with Japan sort of beating them two years ago at the World Cup. Yeah yeah no absolutely I, I think they'll be looking to avenge that loss for sure and um, now it should be a good fixture I think they're both good sides playing some good rugby and um, yeah no I'm really looking forward to that especially like you say up in Murrayfield I haven't been up there before um, so to get to see Edinburgh and um, yeah, another cool stadium like Murrayfield will be um, yeah pretty special. So the role of the TMO um, was mainly you're a professional referee, but um, you've done a bit of TMO this year in uh, Super Rugby, and the role of the TMO has changed a lot in ten years. Ten years ago, it was mainly just uh, making sure the tries were scored in the end goal, but now you're looking at a whole raft of areas of the game and a few other things that you do. Tell us about the role of the TMO in the game of modern rugby today. Yeah, so I mean, that changed for me and just through these COVID times, um, a few restrictions and that meant that um, like we have a really good group of TMOs here in New Zealand, um, established TMOs, um, some of them done a lot of test matches, um, but just due to COVID, um, they started using the referees in the TMO box a little bit because um, they couldn't get everyone everywhere and there were travel restrictions and all sorts of things. So I got in the TMO box a little bit and um yeah, it's, it's a little bit different. Like I found it quite cool because it was a new challenge for me. Um, yeah, obviously, like you say, in the past, it was probably just um, trying yes or no and only came in when it came up to you. But um, now there's a little bit more responsibility on the TMO to sort of oversee the game and, and help the referee out. Um, obviously, around tries, you know, if the referee comes up, is it a try? Um, you have an on-field decision nowadays. Um but also we're just sweeping in the background to sort of watching the replays, rewinding, just to check that there hasn't been any mistakes in the lead up to a try that the referees missed. And then, of course, there's the whole foul play element as well, which is um, just making sure that the game's played safely. And as the TMO, um, you might be called on to um, help adjudicate on some foul play scenarios. So, of course, um, you were selected at the um, start of the year to be part of the British and Irish Lions series as a TMO, but that didn't, help, uh, didn't happen. Tell us about why that didn't uh, take off. Yeah, no, again, that was um, some COVID restrictions just at the time. Um, meant there was a bit of difficulty, um, yeah, for me getting over there. And um, that, would have, that was a really exciting appointment. I was really looking forward to heading over. Um, with uh, Ben O'Keefe, uh, another New Zealand referee who ended up he did go over but um just um yeah some COVID things and and safety related um factors meant that I wasn't able to attend that trip which I was really gutted about you know it was a uh, um it would have been a really unique experience a special experience but um you know I'll just have to keep working and um maybe get a chance on the next Lions tour in four years time 
uh, Australia in four years. That could be a fantastic series. Well, uh, at the moment, you're now based in London. Um, there's only the one international this weekend, uh, the All Blacks versus Wells at uh, Principality Stadium. Um, tell us about what the referees are doing in the lead up to the Autumn Internationals in November. And of course, the life of a referee on tour can be pretty lonely. Uh, what do you do to keep yourself uh, busy? Yeah, so I mean, there's a bit of preparation involved. Um, we've got meetings. Uh, typically, we would meet as a group in, in London or some other location uh, to go over the priorities for the um, Autumn Internationals. But on this occasion, that's all being done by Zoom because um, there are risks associated if all the referees ended up together in one spot and there was a, an outbreak of COVID and that could compromise the whole window. So, um, so we'll be working through that on Zoom. Um, uh, I'm lucky here at the moment. Um, I'm staying with Paul Williams um, in London, and uh, we've got some really good training facilities here. So that'll be us for the next week or so, um, just training and um, working through some things ahead of the upcoming games. Um, but it's it's definitely not um, a tour as as previously we've had. Like there are a lot more restrictions, and you have, have to be obviously pretty careful. Um, a lot of COVID up here in the UK is um, is pretty bad at the moment. So, um, yeah, it's, it's not so much um, socialising and going out and that type of thing. So we, we just stay pretty um, low key and just get our training in and get our prep done. So let's uh, wind back the clock, uh, back to your early involvement in rugby. Um, what, what position did you play? And what was the reasoning for you to become a referee representing the North Harbour Referees Association? Yeah, so um, I played rugby all through school and a uh, bit of club rugby after school. I played as an outside back, so a bit of wing, a bit of fullback. Um, and I just already, always really loved the sport. So um, I'd always been passionate about rugby as a young fella, reading the books, watching the All Blacks, that sort of thing. Um, so I just tried refereeing at, after, after school when I was playing club rugby just to give it a crack and um, just because I love the sport, um, someone just put me onto it, said, you know, you might like this. So I did that for a couple of years, refereed uh, junior games in the morning and then played my own games in the afternoon. And, and after a few years of doing that, I was really enjoying the refereeing and um, opted to, to give up the playing boots and um, yeah, give refereeing a, a proper crack. So. Who are some of your key influences at the uh, North Harbour Rugby Referees Association that got you to where you were? And when did you start um, appearing on New Zealand Rugby's radar as a, as a New Zealand squad member? Yeah, so I was initially coached by um, Greg Watson, who was um, my referee coach within North Harbour. So he really helped me in those early stages sort of um, to understand the fundamentals of refereeing and established a good work ethic around it, around law and keeping fit and that type of thing, um, and, and helped me to get into the New Zealand system where I, I began to work with Colin Hawke. Um, and then Colin Hawke became a coach uh, for a good chunk of my career, and um, he's a great man. And um, so that was probably around 2013. Um, uh, I think I would have been 23, 24, and... Um, yeah, got a crack at, at Heartland Rugby and then and then MPC that same year. So that was really exciting because um, obviously being a passionate rugby man, you know, always watching the MPC on TV when you're little, but um, to get a crack at it and um, and get involved in the in the national squad and and get exposed to some more learning and um, building relationships with um, some a lot more experienced referees was was really really cool. So before you signed your professional contract with New Zealand Rugby. Uh, what were you doing beforehand in terms of your occupation? Because um, you, were, you were involved in uh, sort of engineering. Yeah, that's right. Like I studied engineering at university, uh, civil engineering, and then I worked in the construction industry. So I worked on construction projects um, on the project management side. So um, I was basically out on construction sites, overseeing the work, making sure that we built these projects correctly. And that was things like, um, highways, bridges, wharves, um, yeah, any, any civil construction projects really. So, um, yeah, I, I enjoyed that and, um, yeah, it was, it was definitely something that I was passionate about, but, um, I was refereeing on the side as well. So obviously working during the week, refereeing games in the weekend and, um, but when New Zealand rugby came in and 
offered me the chance to referee as my full-time or main job um yeah that was something that I um had aspired to for some time so um that was really really cool and um yeah I, I've really enjoyed it ever since so you're one of five uh, professional referees in New Zealand and of course it's a pretty tough job uh, refereeing of course um having listened to you at the stadium when I've been doing the timing, you know, it's a lot of um, tension and a lot of players and cameras and all that. Tell us about uh, what comes with being a professional uh, rugby referee and what are the challenges you face and what are the reviews like after each game? Yeah, so there's quite a lot involved um, regarding sort of preview and review of a, a professional rugby game. So just like the teams prepare for the game that they've got in the weekend, we do, um, our own type of preparation. So we'll be working out sort of what to expect from each of the two teams that we've got. We'll be doing a lot of um, preparation work with our team of four. So if you're the referee, you'll be leading that with your assistant referees and your TMO, um, maybe planning a few scenarios that potentially might play out and, and how you're going to work through that as a team. Um, obviously the physical side of it, training, making sure your body is in the best shape to um, referee on Saturday. Um, but yeah, like the game itself, um, yeah, I guess you could say there are, there are pressures around it. I think that's something that you become accustomed to in this job. So if you're out in the middle, obviously, yeah, you've got to stay calm and um, deal with the players. You're running around, so you're making decisions on the go. So um, yeah, there, there's a lot of mental um, uh, mental skills required, as well as the physical, obviously, of refereeing. So um, that's probably during the week, what we're working on, that physical prep, that mental prep, um, technical, tactical game prep. And regarding the reviews, um, yeah, typically that involves watching the game back. Um, you know, you make an assessment of all the decisions that you've made, whether they're correct or they're not. Um, were there any decisions that you didn't make that you should have made? Um, and then you work through that again with your team of four and your referee coach. And the whole mindset about it is um, obviously trying to be better for next time. So what did I do in this game? Well, what didn't I do so well? And, and how can I be better next time? So, um, yeah, that's typical. That's a typical week, I guess, in terms of preview game and, and review. What player is the hardest um, uh, player that you've uh, had to manage on a rugby field? Yeah, look. I mean, at, at times anyone like rugby is a, a competitive sport and people are passionate. So um, I think that's just one of the great things about our game is, you know, it, it gets a lot of passion from the players, from the spectators. And um, so I don't know if there's been one player, but like definitely the moments where, where players are maybe upset at your decision or disagree with it. Um, yeah, they, they can be pretty challenging. Um I, I honestly, I don't want to name names, but there's, you know, there's a common players that you see out there that are giving referees a hard time. So, but, it, but it's cool because those guys, you know, um, question you on the field and, and, and sometimes they're right. Maybe sometimes they're not, but, but genuinely, you know, they're all good blokes and, and you can have a chat with them after the game or during the week or, or however it is. So, um, yeah. Yeah, so refereeing, all, every game's different. Uh, your pitch is always going to be a bit different at times. What's the toughest game you've refereed in your refereeing career? Oh, the toughest game? That's a good question. Um, uh, well, I, I mean, so I, like this year I got the opportunity to referee the All Blacks, which um, mm. was pretty special, like obviously because it's our home country. And um I don't know if it was tough, but it definitely had a different element to it that um, you were managing this. Um, you would never have expected that you'd referee your home country. Um, so that was an extra consideration to have um, going into that game, you know, because you don't want to um, uh, be biased for your home country, but then you don't want to go the other way and, um, you know, try too hard to not be perceived to be biased. So it's just about staying neutral, trusting your... Um, your your processes and, and what you normally do and um yeah so that was definitely one maybe not the toughest but the definitely one that had some unique challenges around it and of course uh, refereeing at eden park and it was also aaron smith's 100th uh, uh, rather special appointment um Bledisloe cup as well so um you know not every day you get to referee your home nation uh, and you did a fantastic job that day um 
2017, you made your test debut. Um, who, who were the two teams competing each other and where was it played? Yeah, so I did that um, in Germany. So that was Germany versus the United States of America. So um, that was a good <laughs> a good game to get your first international win. I was out the uh, back blocks of Germany. I think it was a small town called Wiesbaden. So, um, yeah, there were probably only about 100 people at the ground. And, um, yeah, so th that was a bit different. Um, but, like, it was super special as well just because it's any new game, I think, for any referee, um, when you get up to that next level and you get an opportunity to try yourself in that different environment, um, you know, that's what it's all about, testing yourself and um, seeing if you're capable and then learning Um uh, one of the really special things for me about that game was that I had a couple of really good mates that lived um, uh, in London and in Cardiff and they all made the trip over to Wiesbaden and um, and watched me there so that that was really cool um, and then and then a few beers after the game that night was um, yeah pretty enjoyable. And uh, Rugby World Cup 2019 you were selected to go and you um, helped out on the sidelines assistant refereeing tell us about the experience of Japan. Japan of course uh, the host nation, and it would have been a fantastic tournament because the home side really got up and got the quarterfinals for the first time. Yeah, that, that was an incredible experience. Like, um, I didn't necessarily think that I would have made that tournament. Um, it was, it was something that I had, had, had always sort of targeted. Like, yeah, I'd love to go, but just the way things, the landscape, um, I, I didn't think that I was necessarily there yet. So when I did get selected, that was a, a little bit of a surprise. And just, I mean, it was so special um, to get the opportunity to go up to Japan. Um, and I, I had never experienced anything of that magnitude. You know, I've been to Rugby World Cups as a spectator and remember 2011 fondly in New Zealand, going to a lot of games. But yeah, to be actually involved with it um, and, and just to see the, the magnitude of that tournament and how much time effort money goes into um putting that on um was was pretty crazy um and just the whole experience japan such hospitable um people um they looked after us so well um you know it was a great team of referees there was a lot of i was the youngest there so there's a lot of more senior experienced referees that i can learn from while i'm there and then um then the rugby side of it um, to actually get to officiate and in, in some of those games and and also to get to spectate a few um, yeah the whole tournament was just um, was just an amazing experience from a rugby perspective but also just from a growth perspective to mm. get to experience that and um, you know I took a lot of learning away from it. This year we've seen a number of uh, law variations, uh, goal line dropouts, fifty twenty twos, and. Uh, so on. What's your thoughts on those uh, current law variations? And if there was one law in rugby that you would change, what would it be? Yeah, so I'm I'm all for um, trialing new laws. I know that um, potentially the the public get frustrated that we're always trying things, but um, I think trying trying things is progress. So um, I, I'm personally a supporter of these new law trials. Um, I don't have a strong preference of. You know, do I like the particular laws or not? But I'm just an advocate for trying some things, seeing if it makes the game better or not, and then um, and then implementing those things that um, that work. So um, yeah, goal line dropout fifty twenty two. I see a lot of merit behind the reasons why those were introduced. So um, and they seem to have um, they seem to have gone um, pretty well so far. So I, I imagine that they'll be adopted into the future permanently. Um, Sorry, and the second part of your question is, oh, what law would I change? Um, um, I know some. there's been some trialing of, um, you know, scrum resets, and if you have a reset scrum, that it goes straight to a free kick, like uh, just to um, take away from so many uh, scrum resets and to make the game speed up a little bit. So, yeah, I mean, I'd be happy with that. Um, um, that's probably, yeah, scrum resets are probably a bit of a blight on our game at times. So, Yeah, well, Major League Rugby this year, they trolled that, and um, we had Mungo Mason on earlier in the uh, earlier in the show who talked about that uh, variation and said it helps speed up the game as well, which anything that cuts down on scrum resets, particularly for a referee, is always great. So your family's also been involved in rugby, and your brother also is a referee down here in Wellington. 
yeah yeah that's right um yeah i got my um my old man and my brother into refereeing i i guess they just started talking to me about it over time and as we had conversations about rugby and refereeing um yeah i think i still want to give it a crack and they both did so yeah so i've got my dad and my brother also referees um my dad's a referee in the bay of plenty and my brother's a referee in wellington so um, yeah, so it sort of does run in the family now, I guess, but also my dad's uh, dad, my grandfather was a referee way, way back in the day, back in um, up in Northland. So um, yeah, refereeing and rugby um, has been in the family. It's a great family connection indeed. So uh, Brendan, what's your future ambitions uh, for refereeing professionally? And uh, have you got your mind, your target set on uh, France in 2023? Yeah, I think from just experiencing Japan and just seeing how amazing that tournament was, um, yeah, to know that the next one is in France, I'm sure it'll be equally spectacular. So, um, yeah, naturally, like a natural goal for me is to um, move from being a, an assistant referee to a referee. So, um, yeah, to referee at France in 2023 would be um, a huge opportunity and privilege. Um, so, yeah, I quietly working towards that um, in the background but equally there's a lot of good referees um, at the moment and a lot of my peers with similar goals so um, yeah but at, at the end of the day I'd love to love to achieve that but I'll, I'll support um, others in their aspirations as well. Well Brendan it's been fantastic making yourself available for the hui here tonight or in the morning in your case. Um, all the best for the autumn internationals in November go well um, and also keep yourself safe. Yeah, no, thanks very much, Brad. Appreciate it. Brendan Pickerel, one of New Zealand's uh, five professional referees, a top man of a promising referee career ahead. So that's the Huddy Hui for tonight, but we've got one more episode for the year. That is next week, and it's going to be our 40th episode, and I've left Adam Julian in charge of setting that up. So we'll see what happens uh, next week for our 40th episode and the final one for 2020. I'm Brad Hudson. Ciao for now.